Welcome back to Retail Therapy. My name's Will. My loyal, loyal co-host, Barrett Dudley, is in the studio today. Barrett, how are we today? Oh, man. A lot of big things have happened since uh, since the last time we recorded. Sorry for missing last week, everybody. It's okay, but um, I'm now the owner of my own cell phone family plan. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm off the... Uh, I'm off the teat. Got my own, got my own account. Got my own ever, uh, pay, paying for it myself. You fool! No longer on mom and dad's family plan. Uh, I got kicked off um, my parents' family plan. I am now on uh, my wife's family's <laughs> family plan. <laughs> but they have such a large family that it's technically a corporation plan. <laughs> and so uh, my phone bill is quite low right that, now. Yeah, I mean that is honestly it's smart. Like we we needed to, to 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 separate for you know it was time, but we are we're 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 looking for uh, we're looking to acquire you know some 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 business basically. We've already we've already tried to get uh, my wife's brother to join us on this family plan because you're exactly right. The more lines you get, mm-hmm. you know you got to stack those lines, baby. The lower that price, it, it comes down, and and for two people, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. See, I'm trying to so, find a family that's so big that they have their own insurance plan, uh-huh. and I can Ooh, hop yeah. on that with them. That's, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did that. Let's see. I got a haircut today. I'm trying to do like, it's it's a it's a it's, you, you're not giving. Just got a haircut. It's a work in progress. We didn't do a ton, but I'm I'm kind of trying to do like like little kind of like baby surfer curtains. Okay. Do you know you know what you're like? It's basically the it's a 2024 butt cut. Okay. Yeah. So imagine picture surfer curtains. Picture Ryder Strong on Boy Meets World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like a like a current day version of that, and yeah. not as exaggerated, not parted down the middle. I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm so good with that. Devin Sawa and Casper is another you know good <laughs> yep. good example. I feel like any ch- any child actor from back then they were like, Correct. okay, you can't. A- we're not we're not doing child actors on Disney Channel with bowl cuts, so you're getting a butt cut now, right, yeah, and yeah. we're doing that. <laughs> Well, my, I feel like my haircut went pretty well after talking it out yeah, last episode. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I didn't even show her photos. I simply went in and said, here are my pain points. Here's what's going on. Okay. And I walked out and I was like, yeah, you did pretty much what I wanted. Okay. I have a, I do miss the mullet a little bit, but yeah. it's, it's flaring out a little bit. And it, yeah, it's still kind of giving that. But I see some old clips from like midsummer. Boy, oh boy, did I have a mullet. <laughs> like I didn't realize how mullety that mullet was until uh, until I saw an old, I think a YouTube short of ours. And I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely had that. Uh, let's see what else. I voted. I, I you know, I, I got out there and I rocked the vote. I have also rocked the vote. Do, you, you, you know, you got to vote or die. Yeah, that's it's, fact. It's vote or die. I think they regret having Diddy um, so. being a major part of that campaign now. <laughs> that's it's true. They need to find a new spokesman. For yeah. It. Uh, and then let's see. Last but not least, I've become. You know, a lot of people get seasonal affective disorder. Mm-hmm. Right now, I, I'm having what I call seasonal anger disorder, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where I've I'm now boy, I'm boycotting buying new clothes because today is October 30th and it was over 90 degrees today and it it makes me physically like angry like I, I like I'm angry there was about a, it I hate it there was a barn coat that Sally very much likes it's not on the super expensive side but it's not you know it's not cheap yeah. And it just got back in stock today, and she sent it to me, and she said, "I don't think I need it." And I was like, "I was like, I, I, you can't even get excited about wearing something like that right now because no, there's no, there's, there's no end no, in sight. There's no end in sight." And that's and it's like I've already grabbed like you you talked about you know you've got a few sweaters that are just like absolutely raring to go. Oh, um, I wore the shit out of those had, in New York last weekend. <laughs> I, that's uh, yeah. At least you had the trip, you know, oh. to to get some. It felt so good to put them on and walk outside and not have to take them off. Yeah, to, to put that shit on, but not me, <laughs> not me over here. Uh, and so it's like I've already got a couple things just waiting in the wings. Like I can't, I can't acquire anything new until I at least give those a first run through. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's making me upset because, you know, I'm t- I'm wearing fucking bright orange shorts today, man. Like I shouldn't be shouldn't be able to do that here, and yet I shouldn't be able to do that right now, and yet here I am. So. <sighs> It's hard out here, man. Yeah. We will yeah. endure. We will endure. But like the volume shooting that's going to happen once it actually dips is just going to be ugly. But that, you know, and I got to keep that in mind. I got to keep that in mm-hmm. mind. Like I, I haven't bought know. much. I have not bought much this fall, winter at all. And I feel good about that. And the things that I have bought have not been high price items. They've been like staple stuff that I've been wearing a lot of. And outside, I mean, that's, I'm really just talking pants in that respect. Mm-hmm. But in terms of up tops, I'm not doing anything. It's, it's just pointless. I, yeah. I can coast on the closet that I got right now. We got a loaded episode. I have a major announcement. 
a debut of sorts. If you go to velabox.com slash Sunday Scaries right now, you will see two candles atop the page. You will see the Retail Therapy Candle by Sunday Scaries that is available for purchase right now. You will also see a brand new candle called Everything Shower that has not been promoted, so it's still in stock. Uh, it's a wonderful fresh scent that includes things such as ozone, sea salt, jasmine, violet, cedar, spearmint, eucalyptus, lemon. Ooh, wee. It's just a nice candle. It's very fresh. I've been burning it around the crib lately. And uh, I had one of the, the uh, girls over at Valbox say that's actually her favorite scent yet. Wow. But we also have other big news. There's other stuff in stock that hasn't been in stock for a little bit. New York in the fall is currently in stock uh, as, as well as, wait, is this not on here? Scary Christmas which is one of my favorite seasonals we've ever done, is going to be back in stock. But there's never been a better time to go load up the cart for uh, some Velabox Sunday Scaries candles. Go make it happen. What were you just nodding about there, Randy? I helped with everything, Shower. You'd yeah. have. You've helped. No, I. something about Randy is that I trust his nose. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got a good nose. He understands what he's smelling. He has good taste yeah, in what yeah, he's smelling. Yeah. Uh, and so Randy is officially in the the rotation yeah. when it comes to testing these things out. It, I mean, it was a funny thing back when we were kids and like went to Walmart, like at, with my teenage friends, like we just, you know, you know, hang around Walmart and I would like break off. They're like, where'd Randy? Like, we know where he is. And they candle always find me in the candle section because <laughs> yeah. I love smelling candles. R Randy's nose, I mean, just to pull back the curtain fully, like helped us determine that Retail therapy number two just wasn't quite ready for prime time. No, yet. no, it'll and, be ready and, for prime time. And needed a little bit uh, further workshopping. But I, I will say, uh, I have not gotten to experience the 11 and a half ounce pottery everything shower, but I did, I've pulled back out retail therapy. I had it out of the rotation for a little while. Oh, mine's gone. Um, well, I had an extra that I didn't realize I had an extra. Oh, I'm of, jealous. Yeah. And so I, I I pulled it back out. I've had it uh, under the under the lamp. I, I like to lamp that one to really get that that mm -hmm. scent going. Oh, mm -hmm. so you got the lamp. I remember that was like a wish list I last did, year. I do have yeah. one. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. The, honestly, like, I, <laughs> this this might sound crazy. I like to I like to get one under the lamp and then I like to light a, another candle. Oh, you're crazy! I like to go both to kind of like it's maybe like, like mix scents a little like a bit. Fusion. That's wild. I mean, yeah, it's, people yeah. mix perfumes all the time. Right, right. Like, I'm in there cooking. I'm in I'm in the living room cooking. See, this this actually upsets me a little bit because <laughs> because you you said something on a pod like some sometimes you say things and they, they stick with me for a while. <laughs> And something you saw, said one day has stuck with me every single time I use body wash, which is literally every day, but especially if I'm about to go out. Uh -huh. And I think to myself, like, is this Neroli body wash going to affect my uh, my couple spritzes of cologne that no one can smell on me because I don't use enough? Because one time Barrett said that uh, you have to be careful mixing those because they might create something funky. And uh -huh. now I'm just like, wait. Yeah, I, need, I just I, need to do a test on myself. Yeah, and I don't think there's much – like, if you – like, unless they're completely competing scents, like, unless you're using, like, a very, like, heavy, musky, woodsy fragrance with a floral, light, you know, body wash, like, I don't think – like, they're probably going to go just fine together. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, both and, of the things that I have are not – I want to – they're not musky, like, there's – Yeah. But, like, they, they're they definitely – um, Earth, Earthy. Or, yeah. Or, yeah, no, they've got like, – they've, if they have, like, similar – vibes I, I think they'll be they'll be fine like you said i think we are both i think we're both uh under spritzers mm -hmm. when it comes to to fragrance the only um, time i overdo it is if sally and i are on a trip together alone and i'll just load up that <laughs> I, I, for no other reason than, other than just being like we're not going to see anyone at dinner who can yeah. call me out for smelling strong so uh -huh. i want to sit at dinner and be able to smell smell the cologne that i never <laughs> use <laughs> Sick. Velabox.com slash Sunday Scaries. Go cop those. Uh, YouTube.com slash Sunday Scaries podcast. We are always tossing stuff on the, up on the screen. There's stuff up there right now. And retailpod.substack.com. And finally, retail.pod on Instagram. Go hit that follow. Before we get into today's episode, let's hear from our friends over at Early Bird CBD. Uh, did I take a few early birds at uh, ACL a couple weekends ago? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I wanted to float. Why wouldn't you? But I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to go to the bathroom the entire time we were at ACL. And I was like, oh, I'll just toss some early birds in my little fanny pack, my little Stussy pack. If you're not familiar with them, they're two and a half milligrams of natural THC and twelve and a half milligrams of CBD in each gummy. They're formulated for fun and to make you feel good. They're not going to get you too lit. Uh, if anything, they're going to chill you out a lot, and I think you'll enjoy it. There are so many different use cases for them, from taking one before bed to go to sleep, taking one before a movie just to relax a little bit. And like I said, you can take uh, take one or maybe even two if you're a bad boy uh, while you're out on the town just having some fun. 
Uh, these guys are based in Austin, Texas. I used to stuff the sample packs back at their uh, back at the house that I lived in with these guys. But they've been sponsors with us for a long time, and the main reason for that is because one, they like us, and two, we love us some early bird gummies. Uh, right now, you can get twenty percent off. And listen up, because if you've already used our code, we have a new code RT twenty at earlybirdcbd.com. We'll get you twenty percent off. If you've purchased before, this is a brand new code, so you can go load up the cart. I It's a one-use code, so I highly recommend getting as much as you can because you might as well. Uh, RT20 at earlybirdcbd.com. Go get it. Uh, I've got some news. Long, long ago, Barrett, I uh, ordered the Saltburn vinyl that yes, seems yes, to have some did. type of milky substance that's floating around inside the vinyl. I put up, I put a link in the rundown so that people can see it at home since okay, it's been a okay. while. Um, but... It is finally shipped after weeks upon weeks. Uh, it got to the point where that like ALD's gotten to with uh, sneaker drops. Thank you, Randy. Uh, where people are commenting on Reddit all the time, being like, "Where, where is this? Why yeah, I've got yeah. no communication." Uh, and it's finally shipped. It's going to arrive on Monday, which means I will be unboxing it live on air. Very sick. Uh, when it comes in, I'm yeah. I'm I, I'm excited because it's kind of a funny bit to have this. Uh, you know jizz filled uh record like that's just you know that's that's the joke here ring the jizz gong randy Read the, yeah jizz gong randy um, <laughs> the, the jizz xylophone <laughs> but i'm more excited because the 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 soundtrack is actually awesome and i cannot wait to actually yeah, listen yeah, to it yeah. like this is gonna be sick it's got songs on it that i'm excited to have on vinyl that i don't necessarily want to buy an entire like band's record for so i'm excited for it i can't wait until you do like a little like sunday scaries you know like uh uh like a slow down and it's just like the vinyl spinning with the cum and uh, of it. I, yeah, yep. it's been yep. sick. I've been I've been so just you know <laughs> distracted by the the the, the cum. That I didn't even realize that the center looks like the drain. The drain. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they thought it through. R Randy did a little post on on his stories recently of him listening to some vinyl, and that that post because that vinyl looked kind of funky too. It actually made that's what reminded me, like oh we haven't gotten our our salt burn. No, cum it is. Vinyl it, yet. it was put on the retail therapy credit card, so it was a company expense. Do you do? Here's the thing. Here's the fun thing. Just e whether you're going to do it or not about this type of stuff. Like this was a pre-order, right? Mm -hmm. It took long, long time. Mm -hmm. Now there are only a finite amount of these. I bet you these are reselling. Like I bet you they probably are. I bet they're reselling yeah. for triple. Let me look something. it up. Let me look it up. I'm excited. I mean, I haven't bought very many albums lately because I've been intentionally scaling back just on buying records yeah. in general, but also just trying to. Buy, I'm just actively trying to buy fewer physical yeah. things in life, and so. I'm just excited to get like a new record because I haven't gotten very many lately. This could be a is this maybe this was maybe this was just the uh, the investment that retail therapy needed. You know, we could be taking home I don't know sixty bucks each off of this. Oh thing. yeah, we could. Let's see. <laughs> okay, currently, okay, the bathwater liquid filled one. Uh, the last time it was sold, it sold for ninety dollars. Okay, all right. Median Not price has been one hundred four dollars, and the. Uh, the most expensive that one has sold for has been $126.88. Okay, so not too crazy. Not, not too, too crazy. crazy. The, even, the, even the Taylor Swift uh, Long Pond Sessions is going down in price. Okay, so, all right. So, you know, I think I think things are getting a little more reasonable. I think I there. read that there was like a dip in vinyl for the first year. I think this, I think twenty either 2023 or 2024, vinyl sales declined for the first time in like 20 years. I would believe it because yeah. there's... I, I would believe it. Based on some of the things that I've had on my wish list, which I check often, uh, there are some box sets that I've looked at and stuff that have gone like straight up half in price. Hmm. And so it's a it's a good time to uh it's I think it's a good time to buy at least. Well, Barrett, by the time this episode launches, Halloween will be long gone. That's right. That's uh, right. I know you're a Halloween guy mainly because whenever I see you in a Halloween costume, I'm like, oh, that's a damn good costume. Uh did you dress up this year? Did you see any costumes this year that were standout? Yeah. So um, no parties this past weekend. This past weekend was – I've seen some discourse about this online. When Halloween falls in the middle of the week or really just on a weekday at all, the weekend to celebrate Halloween is the weekend prior. That is how I operate. That, that, that is – you can't celebrate Halloween on in November. When that the, doesn't make when any sense. When the calendar sense. changes, you can no longer go back into the last month. Now, you have to stay in November. Like if th – this is why it's nice when Halloween falls on like a Friday because then you kind of get like – you. there's the Friday opportunity for the party but also the weekend before. You can do – you 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 get either. So you, wanna, you would not be okay with it being a Saturday if it was Friday? celebrating on like a doing a like November 1st like no. I feel like I would be okay with that more that, than the Thursday it's right a now. that's a gray area I think it's gray 
if 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 Halloween is a Friday, yeah, I, I'll give you the Saturday. If I'll Halloween's give you November first in that in that one scenario. But if you're throw if it's a Friday and you're throwing a Halloween party on the Saturday, that's your mess up. You got to throw it on the Friday when it's actually Halloween. Yeah, unless yeah. you're dealing with like a bunch of people with kids and stuff. But get those kids to bed and then have the party. Yeah, yeah. So um, so no, I did not get a chance to fully dress up this year. I, I wouldn't have been original anyways. If I had had a party to go to, I think I would have gone. Uh, the, my, I, the, what I was thinking about, and I was thinking about this, I, I will dress up for a work Halloween party, but I think I'm I'm leaning towards uh, inside joke work stuff. Okay. I If I had had a party to go to, I was thinking about going full drag Chapel Run. Oh, that's good. But 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 people, I mean, Benny Drama and Pass That Puss, they already- Yeah, they, they did. Like, they, they fucking crushed they the- They crushed. The, the the trio basically they did who was the third guy i can't even remember but uh, they... i didn't know it, sally told me who it was but it was not someone who was as famous okay. as benny drama and uh jake shane yeah but they, they did the, the 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 holy trinity right now of of sabrina charlie and and chapel mm -hmm. and so that was like that was sick so then i was workshopping a costume for my work uh, for my work party for my work halloween where i was literally going to be brat summer Okay. And I had a full, I, w I have ordered two full lime green, like green man suits. Okay. You know, like the full stretchy Yeah, yeah, the morph kits. suits. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have one here. Yeah, go look at Twitter. Dylan was wearing one. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> you can see something there. <laughs> and uh, I got, I got both. And then I was just, so and then I was going to do the brat lettering on the chest. Good. And then I was going to get a, like a sun balloon from Party City, like the fla the floating helium ones and tie it around my waist. And that, that would be like my summer. And then I would just literally be brat summer. I got these green suits in the first one, which was the full head one. You cannot fucking see out of that. Yeah, thing. I don't understand how people do it. I thought you were supposed to be able to see out of them. You can't see out of it. When you see dudes at football games in them, it's like, what? You're doing this the entire football game? I, they can't. They're definitely not watching the football game. I also thought it was slightly too big. So I ordered one that had the face cut out in the size down. And I got that one. And let me just, like, you could see all of the anatomy, all of the. It seems to be a trend lately. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I decided that this was a, a no go, and now I am I'm audibling to a to an inside joke Howler Brothers costume. That's good. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I mean, I'm I I dressed up for uh, Circling Back's Spooky Season. Yeah, and I just wore the lederhosen that I had from uh, from our son's now, first. Do you birthday do party. you not dress up for different times like Dave does? No, oh, okay. no, that's a Dave. That's, that's a, a Dave, Dave obligation. Yeah, <laughs> I. Yeah. I, lo I love doing spooky season. I, I actually do like Halloween more than I have kids now, but I, Halloween still doesn't excite me. Okay. I, I don't right. get excited to dressing up. If anything, it stresses me out. Yeah. Uh, the list of costumes that I've had is not good in hindsight. And uh, I just am not good at coming up with good costumes for myself. The, the best one, the best one that, that you did a great one with Sally like seven, eight years ago. Yeah, where we all just switched. Switch, dressed as each other. That was that was hilarious. It that was great. Awesome. Yeah, that yeah. one worked out very well. Uh, <laughs> but like she had, she did most of that. Like yeah. she ordered everything for me. I also was very down to wear a Halloween costume where I got to wear scrubs. Scri it right, was like, well, right. that's comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and all I had to do was put on a really itchy wig and deal with that. <laughs> but other than that, it was really easy to do. <laughs> I think everyone liked that costume though, because she was just acting a fool like me, and I was like, "Stop! Do I act like this?" <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, yeah. So I look, look. The Halloween parties have been off the table the last couple of years, but I think twenty twenty five is the is the year that uh, that they that they come back. I'm I'm I you know I'm I'm planting that flag. I'm I'm going as Barry Keoghan from Saltburn next year. There you go. I need to get rid of the beard and get a jawline. Um, you just need to start mewing. I do need to start mewing if I'm being honest. I, I dude, I, I'll hit up our, our our guy Braxton. He's got a, uh, a, a mastic gum company. Really? Yeah. It's, uh, you're, you're, you heard about this? You heard about this? No, I have I, not. I've heard about mastic gum. gum. Uh, his is called he, he and I think it's he and his fiance. Yeah, Mystic Gum, Mystic Gum, Mystic Mastic Gum. Right here. That's that's him and her right there on the front page. Let's see these jaw lines on our man. <laughs> you think they don't have jaw lines? I know. Please. Yeah. Uh, you can't start this company if you don't have a sick ass jaw line. But yeah, I so, yeah. So this, you know. Whole squad getting gum. Whole, whole squad getting mystic gum, getting them getting them jaw lines edged up. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Oh, I'm fine with that. Come on, Barrett. You look at your jaw line. You <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're work. fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear it from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what mine looks like anymore. It's been years. Been years. You know? 
And that's I want to keep it that way. Well, Barrett, I was in New York over the weekend. You made the, uh, you made the pilgrimage. I made know? the pilgrimage. Uh, New York in the fall. You've got mail style. Uh, I'm going to get out ahead of it. I did zero shopping. I went to zero stores, Barrett. It wasn't because we were too busy. We had the opportunity to go to a couple places, and I simply said, I don't need to buy anything. Yeah. I shouldn't even go into these places. We were wow. like outside of Alex Mill, and I had already, there was a sweater that I already wanted from Alex Mill. And yeah. I was like, Sally, if I go into the store, I'm coming out with the sweater. So uh -huh. I don't even want to go in because I don't need it. <laughs> I don't even wear the sweaters that I've been talking about on retail therapy all the time. I simply yeah. can't do it. Yeah. Ended up being much more of a uh, food and drink trip, which I was okay with. Did you did you even have an opportunity? Was there a moment where you thought about taking the boys to get some Unisphere hats? Uh, there, a little bit, a little bit, but we were never in, like, I was never in that area with them. Okay. okay. But had we gone in that area, and by the time I was with, like, Dave and stuff, it was, like, a Friday afternoon, and it would, I know there was going to be a line, yeah, and I wasn't yeah. going to, I wasn't about to do that. I could have hit up our boy, Gian, and, and asked him to yeah, cut the line. Yeah, or maybe Brandon, too. Yeah, um, but I just, I didn't. I didn't feel comfortable, nor did I have the motivation to do it because I didn't want to buy anything. I would have bought something. Yeah, you can't in go store. in there and not and not and not scoop. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I did want to give a rundown of some of the things we did because okay. I had some very good meals. Uh, we stayed at the Bowery Hotel, which Barrett and I had a drink there last time we were there for the retail therapy event. Um, so that's it's, the home. That's where the the our 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 own personal white Negroni craze was born. It was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. 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 Um, I. They make a great martini in that bar. I think you have to be staying at the hotel in order to go to the bar. And so I don't want to totally say, like, go show up there and do it. But I did see some people walk in and just not get told that you couldn't be there. Like, they just went and sat down. And I was like, respect. Huh. Um, but I do think you need to be either staying there or be a guest of someone staying there. Okay. Um, Interesting. A lot of celebs in that bar, though. Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah, recognize yeah. any of them. But I just don't watch the TV shows that they were on. But a lot of celebs there. Um, restaurants that we went to that I will vouch for. Uh, in no particular order. Lartuzzi, have you been there? I, no, 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 nothing on your list have I have have I been. I, well, except for actually, no, I scratch that. I've not been to your first three. I've been to the second two. Okay, so Lartuzzi is an Italian restaurant. It was very, very good. It, it was. I had my favorite dish of the entire trip at Lartuzzi. Our first night there. It was this like bucatini nero, which yeah. I did not realize was going to be like squid ink pasta. It just sounded really good and had crab in it. And so I was like, oh, that sounds great. Let's mm -hmm, get that mm -hmm. and some cacio e pepe. It was so good that I was asking for more bread to drag through the sauce when we were all done with it. Yeah. Very good meal. Great martinis. They were out of cocktail onions, but I'm not going to hold that against them. Uh, we did have lunch at JG Mellon, iconic New York spot where people uh, love their cheeseburgers. Uh, we did that. And it lived up to the hype. Had a very good burger there. Was it a smash burger? Uh, it was not a smash burger. Okay. It was it was a round boy. Um, they serve it with just pickles and onions, which, to be honest, is all I need on a burger. And it was it was very good. Uh, I didn't like the fries though. The fries were just kind of like shaved discs of potatoes okay. with like ridges. They weren't waffle fries. It looked like waffle fries had been filled in. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So they're yes. like thick ruffle chips. Yeah, kind of. It just wasn't my favorite fry. You had to oversalt them in order to to really enjoy. Uh, we also ate at a place called Raffs, which was Italian and French, and that was quite good. Did you say you had been there? No, I've not. I've not. But I rec But I think Raffs is. Uh, I recognize it because I've seen celebrities wearing their merch. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't even see any merch. They had uh, the food was incredible. It was like everything we had was very, very good. The only issue is that we weren't that hungry. We had a big eating day leading up to that, and so we were just kind of picking at stuff. Uh, they did have a very incredible bar. And what I liked about the bar is that they essentially had a piece of etched marble or maybe it could have been painted, painted marble on the wall where they had their list of classic cocktails. And it was just like, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, if I had a really nice bar, this is exactly what I would want to do. Yeah. Very retail therapy coded, very good. Um, didn't have any cocktails there, but I the wine be, was great. I might be wrong. Maybe I've not seen a Raffs. Maybe I'm thinking of Ray's. Uh, yeah, probably, which I've definitely seen. Oh yeah, there Ray's, was so Ray's, much. There were so many Rays hats floating around yeah, that city. Yeah, and I feel like everyone wearing one did not live in New York. Did y'all go to Rays? We did not go to Rays. No, I okay. watched by it at one point. Mm. Uh, we did have some drinks at Finelli. Yeah, where we uh, had our biggest celeb sighting of the weekend, which was uh, Mayhem from the Allstate commercials. It's very cool. Yeah, 
he was he was acting like mayhem, and I don't mean that in a bad way. But like just looking at him, it's like he's just he is mayhem now. What, was he hanging out with like friends, or or what was he doing? I could I didn't have a view of him when we were sitting down, but I was told he was just chilling out, just like on his phone. Like just, was he wearing his mayhem suit? No, he didn't have the mayhem suit on. Mm-hmm. He wasn't dressed badly or anything. Yeah. But man, you can put back some Guinness there. I'll yeah. say that. It was a very chill situation. And then uh, I had breakfast with our friend of the pod, uh, Andrew, at Balthazar, where I sat next to Joe Montana, who had a dozen oysters for breakfast. <laughs> very, very interesting order from Joe Montana. Joe Montana. Yeah, I, I didn't know I was sitting directly next to him. Like, el- like he and I could have bumped elbows the entire time. Yeah. Like, we were just that close. And I didn't know until we stood up and someone just said, Will, I need to know who the celebrity sitting next to you was. And I turned around and I was like, okay, I know the face. And I was like, okay, football player, San Francisco 49ers, Joe Montana. And I, I, I finally got it. But yeah, I, I noticed the guy next to me, who was eventually Joe Montana, was just... Uh, what you, you, using his fork and grabbing the oysters out of the shell and eating them. And I was okay. like, that is a very interesting 9.30 a.m. breakfast. <laughs> maybe he was like on uh, like on London time. Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe he had maybe. just like come from across the pond and, and he was just having his like. His I was picks. on London time there. I got a full English breakfast there. Uh, at Balthazar? Yes, yeah. which I would not recommend doing at Balthazar. Uh, the, the beans and toast and eggs were good, but like the breakfast meats just left a little bit to be desired if I'm being honest. Okay. I was surprised. Did you see uh, McNally in there? Just no, like I think he's more of a 10 off, p.m. show cra- up. Crazy Instagram posts. That's honestly a dream of mine to see him just firing off something insane. I want to see him leaving the restaurant firing off the, I'm out for the next month. Do not contact <laughs> me. I don't care who you are. If you're my family, do not contact me. I will be in Argentina doing nothing. Uh but yeah, overall, great, great uh, New York trip. Have you ever seen the show High Maintenance on HBO? Yes. Uh, we did pass the guy the, the, uh, the, while the walking dealer? to the, the circling back meetup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sally goes, Will, that's, that's the guy from that HBO show. And I didn't see him, but Sally was so locked in and positive that I absolutely trusted it was him because it's, she loved that it's show. It's great. Like, I think I see a cel- that If you want to see a celeb, New York is a place. It's actually not L.A. Yeah, I, like, I agree. I, I guess you could just go plop down in like Silver Lake and like at a coffee shop and like hope to see some somebody walk in, you know, yeah. Tom Holland or whatever. But um, but like you are going to see a celebrity if oh, you yeah, go if you go ton. to New York. We saw a ton. They're just they're just hanging out there, you know. They're just hanging. It's a great time to be there. It was great. I mean, we were we were walking around in the morning with uh, light jackets and the vest mm-hmm, on, mm-hmm. and then uh, in the afternoon was just sweater weather. You know what? A little I, chilly I, at I, night, it, but it was good. Nobody talks about this enough. Um, but uh, it's it's hard to shop on a trip with friends. It is. You don't like it, it's it's not conducive to shopping. No, you're constantly trying to meet up with people or yeah, like find right. people or like you have reservations you have to go to. It's a lot easier to shop. Like when it's just Sally and I on vacation, you can pop into stores, take long walks because you're not on anyone else's schedule and just go do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And even even when we were there a couple years ago, like it like it. It, one other couple is like is is manageable mm-hmm. uh and we obviously retail boys like part of the thing was to you know we needed to shop oh, yeah, had we, ne- to. we needed to shop i regret for, not doing any shopping for content but, but yeah but like if you go if it's it, like i don't want to i don't want to walk i don't want to make somebody go into a shop with me and then i'm and then i got to be sheepish about stopping it trying on clo- oh let me just try this on now nah, then when, then, when then there's other people it? there and they're like gonna sitting down in a chair i can't shop yeah it. yeah that's on me i was taking up all of will's time he was yeah i, I was hanging out with randy just constantly <laughs> we, we saw each other for all of one minute that whole trip <laughs> yeah we we talked at the meetup for about 30 seconds well randy you looked like you were going solo dolo uh, I was on. You you looked like you were on a on a yeah. on a solo quest on a, a Saturday. I definitely was at Central yeah. Park, uh, the zoo. I did they, like, did you yeah. just have like stuff on your hit list that these and these guys were just like we don't want to fucking do uh, that. The exact opposite. I had nothing on my hit list. I was like I should probably go see Central Park, which was cool. I want to see a Statue of Liberty. Didn't do that. Um, you hit your favorite pizza place, Sabaro. <sighs> Let me tell you, uh, New York pizza. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it. Did you d- did you hit Luc- Lucia with uh, Dave and Alyssa? I did not. I had that no pi- pizza. That pizza looked absolutely gas. Dave said it, it was comes, incredible. I know it comes highly recommended. Yeah, yeah. People people are very high on that, and the reviews were uh, in line. Yeah. with the recommendations. Yeah. I, I'm probably saying it wrong. Lu- Lucia? No one knew Lu- how to say Lucia? it. Lucia? No one knew how to say it. Yeah, I would like to know. Lueve. 
Loewe. There it is. It's pronounced Loewe. Um, I, I do appreciate all the all the listeners who reached out and gave me a bunch of stores to go to. I, I apologize for not going to literally any of them. Uh, but I will be. I, I have screenshots of everything so that next time I go, I can uh, pop into some of them, and then next time I go, or or if you know, I should probably just post like a, a Substack with a bunch of yeah. the stores that people recommended. Uh, honestly, the way the the my one of my favorite days shopping NYC ever. Actually, it's not not just one. I think there have been multiple like this, but like a couple, couple years ago, a few years ago, I went with Laura and we did. We did Brooklyn, and then we were in Manhattan for a couple nights, which kind of like bled into a work trip that she was on. And so, like that that one day that I had that she, where she was working, I just cruised around Soho like solo shopping. Now that's that's the way to go. That yes. is the way. That is the way to do it. I was just a pig in shit. I had a total that, day to burn day. on a work trip once, and I walked from Brooklyn to Manhattan, shopped all the stores that we talked yeah. about on here. Walked back to Brooklyn, and I it was like I just felt so accomplished that yeah. day. You're just Julia Roberts, like in, uh, oh, in yeah. Pretty Woman, just bag, bags yep. bagged up to the to the neck. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to say to the tits, yeah, so, bad, so bad, so <laughs> bad <laughs> <laughs> to the t- neck. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know it's 2024. I got you. You can't be too careful out here. Yeah, but I feel like Brat Summer opened things up a little bit true, to be a little more true. sexy. Speaking of sexy, let's hear from our friends over at Magic Mind. Here's the thing. There's a lot of distractions in the world. It makes it hard to focus on what you actually want to be doing. You know, we're all just stressed. We all want to be high performers. Our mental and physical health is important to all of us. What if you could be more efficient, but also have an enjoyable day? Well, five years ago, Magic Mind set out to create a drink that would consistently get you to 100% mental performance without any of the down effects like over-caffeination, jitters, anxiety. Uh, a fun note about Balthazar Breakfast do not order the second iced Americano. You will be buzz, buzzing afterwards, and you do not get that same effect when you take a Magic Mind. Uh, Magic Mind is a mental performance shot, so it's just an addition to your daily routine that gets you focused, mentally clear, motivated, and productive while reducing stress with mushroom nootropics and adaptogens, plus over 100% of your daily vitamin C and vitamin D per bottle. It's 100% safe. All these are uh, third-party tested and sourced from only the best suppliers. As you know, there's no quick fixes in life. So instead of relying on those, they believe in mental that mental performance should be tackled on the long term uh, to achieve a balance of productive and stress-free living. Some of their ingredients can take three to four days to reach their full effect, so they recommend drinking Magic Mind daily to see how you feel after one week of Magic Mind versus one week without it. It's not a coffee replacement. No one, no one wants to replace their coffee. It's a ritual. It's a ritual as much as it is anything. And so uh, you can still take this with it. It's even got, uh, it, it helps you avoid the caffeine crash. It's a beautiful thing. You also have less stress behind it. Doctors have validated this. Over 200 scientific studies are behind every ingredient, which you can, I mean, if you want the link, I'll send you the link. I got it right here in front of me. Their mushrooms are even organically grown in California. Just go check this out. There's no risk. They're so confident that they've uh, even done a 100% refund policy. No questions asked for 100 days after buying. It's shipped internationally to over 65 countries, and it's now in Sprouts, Central Market, and Erewhon. You have a, uh, there's a limited offer that our listeners can use that gets you up to 48% off your first subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase with code RETAILTHERAPY, all one word at checkout. You can claim it at magicmind.com slash retailtherapy. Just make sure to use Retail Therapy at checkout for 48% off your first subscription or 20% off one-time purchases. We had a baby girl slip up. Have you seen this? No, I've not. I I, I saw this on the list. I'm you know I'm for the, very curious what what uh, what the slip up was for maybe the first time. Actually, maybe this is the first time since he was accused of uh, running off on one night stands in the park. But uh, uh, there, I, I I've been seeing the word "ick" with Paul Mescal on my timeline lately, and I don't like it. But I do think it's kind of justified here. Uh, they're promoting Gladiator Two. And so he was doing, he was talking about, I think, getting attacked on the street or something. Yeah. And they were kind of joking about how, like, how people have time to take their phones out and do stuff and whatever. And all the, all the guys were laughing. And then Saoirse Ronan and interjected and pretty much said, well, women have to think about this all the time in a very serious tone. And everyone got like, and the, you even saw Paul Mescal go like, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like, I didn't think about that. And it's just, he's getting roasted for this on Twitter. I don't think it's I don't think it's 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 definitely not taking him out of baby girl status. But I'm seeing a lot of I've seen a lot of tweets that I'm like, no, you don't believe this. People are like, oh, I've had the ick on him for a while. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. 
They they love to build a baby girl up mm -hmm. just so they can tear them down. They that's, do. That's the thing that you have to that you have to remember. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna. I'm, gonna I'm, I'm putting this clip on here. To me, I'm not gonna go phone. I hate him. One second. One second. Wait, 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 wait. That's a very good point. Yeah. But, but I like that's the That's what girls have to think about all the time. Yeah. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> all the guys shut up so quickly. They're like, "Oh no!" Uh, all right, this is not. This is not nearly as bad as I as I thought. No, the, the, I, I even think that I the. Think I think we should focus on the girl boss who is winning and not the baby girls who are maybe treading water right now. Yeah. Yeah. I get, I get, this is that. Sir Sharonin gagging men loved, we love to see it. I guess she did. She, you know, she, she shut them up. Mm -hmm. You know, they, mm -hmm. they definitely felt like they had their foot in their mouths. But I will be seeing um, this in theaters. The uh, queer? No. Uh, Gladiator 2? Gladiator 2. Okay. I would like to see Glad. I haven't been in the movie theaters uh, in years at this point. I'll be breaking that street to go see Gladiator 2. It's either wow. going to be with my wife and we'll get a babysitter or I, I might just go one afternoon in the office when I don't have okay. anything to do because I want to see it so bad. I love the original Gladiator yeah. and the yeah. cast of this one is just absolutely firing. Yeah. Is Timothy Chalamet anywhere near Baby Girl? Is he a Baby Girl? <sighs> yeah, he's on the list. He's like one of the original. Is he on the list? I think he's so. In, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I just yeah. want to make sure. We don't talk about him very he's often. original five. Well, unfortunately, I had to fly out early in the morning on Sunday, and I completely missed uh, the lookalike contest down the street from our hotel in Washington Square Park. You did. Yeah, it was devastating. Yeah. <laughs> um, apparently, someone got arrested at the, the Timothy Chalamet lookalike contest. Arrested for looking too much like Timothy Chalamet. Is apparently, he didn't. Yeah. I don't know if he actually <laughs> entered, but the word on the street was that he, he didn't win, <laughs> which is tough. Yeah. T Timmy? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He, he showed, showed up, up, though. He did. He, he did. showed up. Uh, very, what a, what a, just an amazing, this is like, just like a, what a good move from, from Timmy C here to show Showing up, up, to show up to this. Yeah. If they were having a Barrett Dudley lookalike contest in Austin, Texas, you're not, not showing yeah, up you to gotta that, show, right? You got to show up I, to that. I, I yeah. think famously Charlie Chaplin got third place at his, at his, at his own look. <laughs> really? That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, but Timothee Chalamet is a, um, he's a New York King, you know? Yeah. We he that's where he stays. Mm -hmm. So he he got to come. He's got to come through and and hang out at at the park and see all his lookalikes. I have scaled back my takes regarding him playing Bob Dylan after seeing trailers for this movie. Uh, I think I might have been a little harsh on him. I think I might have underrated his ability to uh, play Bob Dylan and sing like Bob Dylan because of what from what I've seen and heard, I'm very impressed with what's going on right now. Okay. Yeah, the <laughs> It's been a minute since we had, it's been a few years, right? Since like a major music biopic came out. Elvis is the last one. I okay. Yeah. Elvis. 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 Right. That's, that's a good one. And then the, before that there was like Rocket Man yep. and uh, the, the Freddie Mercury one. Yeah, uh, was that called We Will Rock You? Uh, uh, it's just Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. Thank you. I, yeah. I guess there was the, uh, the Bob Marley one, but I feel like that didn't make as much waves. Oh yeah. 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 I actually yeah, started watching that on the plane ride home because I kind of needed something. I wanted something lighter and I was like, oh, well that's going to be light. No, it's, it's, it's heavy. And so uh, I, but I, I wasn't sold on the actor being Bob Marley. No, same. And that that's kind of what I was going to say with these. It's like with 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 Rocket Man, which was um oh, I can't think of the actor's name right now, but uh then and then uh Rami Malek was uh Freddie Mercury and Austin Butler as Elvis even and then Taron and then, Egerton. Taron Ed yeah, that's right. These and then even back to like Jamie Foxx with with Ray or uh Joaquin Phoenix with uh Johnny Cash. Like you lost these guys in the role. Yeah. Right. And yeah. when I look at Chalamet and even Jeremy Allen White uh on the set of the Bruce Springsteen. I biopic, think he'll crush that. I but I right now, like these both of those guys are like so saturated and so on social and and out in the public discourse right now that I can't help but just see Chalamet playing Dylan. It's hard. Well, they, they also have play, like, such defined faces. Yes, like, like I they just look see them. so much like them, like this, like themselves. That sounds yeah. so stupid. But like Chalamet's face yeah, is very specific. No they're one very yes. Lisa Al Galib. What? Dune. Lisa Al Galib. Oh, dude made a Dune. He made a Dune. Yeah, that's who. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, Lisa, Lisa Al Galib. Right over yeah. Will's head. 
You should watch the Dune movies. Though. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm struggling to watch anything right now. I, st- I need to finish Emily in Paris. We started. We fired up the finale of Emily in Paris last night. Saw it was 45 minutes and immediately turned it off. <laughs> there's, there's actually a pretty funny uh, video that started to me that Adele did a. Uh, like a lookalike contest and it was like a singing thing and she was there and they're like interviewing all the, like the girls at the same time and she like in the group the whole time it was pretty funny i look it up this looks like this contest was huge and the, the prize does. was 50 you got a giant $50. check for yeah. 50 bucks <laughs> this reminds me of the office episode where they spend all of the money that they made on buying the giant check yeah right uh, that, that's kind of what it seems like here but yeah a lot of a lot of timmies there are a lot of timmies in new york you know? Apparently they were kicking people out. It got too wild. It got too big. It got too many. Titties. We were right down the street from this, <laughs> staying there. I'm so bummed. If it, had this been on Saturday, your boy would have been up in there just doing live coverage from the Timothy Chalamet contest. Yeah. Oh so. well, it's a bummer. I'll try to make the next one. TBD. And I'm I'm holding out hope for both of the the movies that we just mentioned. You know, I'm not I'm not I'm not judging I'm too. In, until uh, until they're faith. out. But just just I don't know. Like but like neither of the roles requires like a whole lot of like physical transformation for these guys. Mm-hmm. And I think I need a little bit of that to buy into the you yeah. know to losing the actors in to the character and yeah. not just seeing these famous people playing the role. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Should we talk brands real quick? How about a couple of brands? Yeah, yeah. I'm a little, I, I'm a little split on this Ralph Lauren uh, thing that I'm doing right now because uh, they've put out a video with the uh, classic Ralph Lauren bear. Does that bear have a name? Polo bear. Just polo bear. He's polo bear. I feel like they, uh, they are just stealing Paddington swag word for word, bar for bar, right now. Yeah, it's it's definitely it, it it's definitely Paddington and Jason. Yeah. That being said, I I think I love it. I like it. Like, like it's it. so yeah. cozy and good feeling. And I'm really if they did an entire movie that was just the polo bear just doing swag things all the time, like he was a man of a bear of taste. I would watch the shit out of that they movie. They could do okay. You know, polo bear always comes in like all these various iterations, right? Yeah. There's a new one typically every year. There's some classic ones. There's Americana polo bear. There's you know, there's there's Expedition or, or um, Explorer polo bear there's tux polo bear right they could do like a benjamin button style movie just like going through polo bear's life where he is all of these different things he could be a secret agent and just be just be assuming costumes Um, all the time and 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 i'm i'm all in for that because look at the look at this little guy man you know he's just he's just on the train just having having a cuppa I can't even imagine how much money that went into making this like <laughs> 10 second social clip of him on this train. But like, I'm glad they did this. It's very good. I, I like. I have seen no no down talk on it other than me accusing them of stealing from Paddington. Yeah. I don't know. I might have to go to Padding- Paddington in Peru since it uh, releases before uh, Gladiator 2 does. What, what? Have you guys seen Paddington 2, by the way? Oh, I, uh, no. Barrett, please see it. Okay. It's a, it's a great movie. Can I skip Paddington 1? Uh, I think Paddington One's a little boring. Okay, Paddington Two is much, much better. But th- th- I, I have a quick have question for you, Will. This yeah. is Polo Bear um, taking the train to New York City to celebrate a season of timeless style and traditions. All things that we can get behind. Mm-hmm. But where is this gorgeous train into the city? Is yeah. this something that exists? Can I ha- can I also ride this train with my friend Polo Bear? This looks a lot different than the bus that I took from JFK <laughs> to a random parking lot to get my Uber from JFK. And this is clearly not the subway. Paddington 2 has a 99% fresh on, on Rotten Tomatoes. The people. They 99%. They, they stand Paddington. Um I would just I just want to know if this train actually exists and if so where how do I sign up to take it? Yeah, I would this, love to be drinking uh I love a train vibe. A cappuccino. And, and yet I don't think I've ever actually been on like this type of train vibe. No, the closest I've been is the train that we took from London to Edinburgh and uh it while it had a, a similar setup from a blueprint standpoint, uh there weren't there wasn't paper there wasn't a uh, wallpaper Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, nice wood finishing. You didn't. You didn't have these b- nice gold uh, kind of like stoppers on the uh, the corners no, no. of the table that looks like it was ripped out of the polo bar. N- no, no, no. They didn't no. have that. They did have. Uh, they did have very nice. Uh, they did have a nice little food cart where you could go get some actually legitimately decent food. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, I didn't. I didn't feel like I was polo bear just swagging out. Yes, uh, but. Look, it's it's not even November yet. We can only hope that that Ralph Lauren is about to drop a nice little series of uh, of cozy polo bear vibes. I'm very here for it. Um, I kind of included this because it's not something that we've talked about. I but uh, but you know if you're if you're living in the the fashion world such as we are, 
then you're probably familiar with the social media team over at Essence. Mm -hmm. um, they are unbelievable at what they're doing. They are memeing, you know, like just they're they're just memeing. They well, become self aware a little they, bit. They have, and they're they the meme lords constantly like they they're just constantly coming up with these really really creative and brilliant Instagram posts. Um, the the recurring phrase that you'll see in the comments is like the essence social media manager needs a raise. Uh, somebody says that every time they post. When they say the intern needs a raise, I'm just like, you imbecile. <laughs> they, no one is putting an intern in charge of social media anymore. It is not 2008. This is not what's happening. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, th this one kind of made, uh, I think, some waves recently. I, th somebody con I, think, I can't remember who touched on this, but I saw this one refer, uh, referenced in another publication. But it was the, so you want to be a creative director um, what do they call it? The flow chart? What is mm -hmm. this? Uh, the decision tree? Decision tree. That's that's what I think it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can roll it, with you on that. And it's like eight slides and you you keep choosing which one and then you either get, you know, you you get stymied or you continue on to to your uh to your inevitable uh end of having a a small dog beat you out for the creative director <laughs> role. But it's so brilliantly done. This is just one of many. And mostly I just wanted to shout them out. But also my question for you mm -hmm. is, do you think that the Essence social media team, do you think it's millennials that are keenly aware of Gen Z of, of Gen Z bits? Or do you think they have Gen Zs putting these together? I think they I th I think we've officially reached the time in social media where you at least, if you're a brand like this, you at least need to have someone Gen Z on your team. Because if if you rely on just millennials picking up on stuff, they're not gonna they're not gonna pick up on everything. And there's eventually going to be an egregious, egregious uh air. chuggy moment. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and I think that now anyone worth their salt is hiring someone who is 22, 20 under the age of 26 or 27 that knows exactly what's going on and says, no, this is cool, this is not cool. And I think they entrust those people with I, I think there's a lot of responsibility there. You you yeah, you're probably right, and and I'm gonna hedge here uh, and and give a boring answer, which is that it ha it it's got to be a mix of both. Right? It has to. They're too good. They're too on point to be exclusively dialed in by millennials. But they're also, and this is not a shot at at Gen Zs. It's just that for the most part, you're you're too young to be smart yet. They're too. They're like they're too witty. They're too they're too funny, and they speak too well to like people with money. Yeah, which are not Gen yeah. Zs yet. Mm -hmm. That, that, that there has to be like a millennial touch to it too, because they there there are either references or just like little like the way that they phrase some things doesn't feel it's too polished You're to be for the full word. Gen Z wisdom. There's some millennial wisdom. Yeah, it's yeah, like and it's yeah, just this, yeah. yeah, yeah. And like a big example of this recently has been uh, a phrase that has been brought from the dead in Declare We All Fam. <laughs> Uh, this has been popping up everywhere, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's because of Gen Z this is popping up everywhere, but it's originally from Broad City, starring two very millennial people, Yeah, yep. and it's a show that I watched every episode of, if not the night of, then I watched it the next day, recorded, and the fact that it's popping up now is just hilarious to me, because I'm like, they don't even know, they don't watch Broad City, they don't know what they're talking about, but like now, like, but I was late to realizing how popular that was. And I feel like I'm pretty in tune with these things. Yeah, yeah. In the club, we all fam. <laughs> it's a great phrase. Yeah, I've been I, waiting to deploy that for something. They they even had SNL Kamala Maya Rudolph make that. Reference. They did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. SNL has been kind of fire in this yeah. season, yeah. if I'm being yeah. honest. Hey, 50th anniversary. You know they gotta they gotta pull out the big guns. I I hand up. I didn't I didn't recognize Ariana Grande's acting game until uh, her her episode. Sh man. Uh, shouts to Ariana Grande because she is really, really good at doing SNL. How how is she so unassuming in everyday life, and then she goes on SNL and is outshining the like the yeah. legitimately funny people yes. that are in skits with her? She is very, very good. She does it with a straight face. Yep. She doesn't budge, and she does a great job of everything. I was just so impressed by her yep. entire performance on there that I was like, just put her in the put her in the cast. Yeah, totally. She, she was totally. great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, hopefully on her road to the five timers club because like just bring her back every season her they her, should she is really good at that yep. i think she'd do it too what else we got will i'm trying to see i got we got, I got some we got some oh. coat, coat lengths Question yes about coat okay lengths. Coat, uh, okay 
I, like I said, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to overshop right now. I've got jackets that I probably won't even get to this year. But um, somebody sent in the Ask Vanessa column on New York Times about uh, winter coats. It says proportion is key to pulling an outfit or pulling together an outfit. But given the different lengths for different dresses, skirts, and pants these days, what does that mean for winter coats? There seems to be a margin before a long coat becomes frumpy. And the, uh, and though cro- cropped coats look great, they offer little coverage. Is it possible to strike a balance between warmth and style? And I'm not I'm not tackling this from the female perspective because I'm not wearing a lot of skirts these days, or I'm not wearing jackets with shorts. Mm-hmm. But I've been seeing a lot more men wear coats that go down um, past the waist. I mean, past the waist and like to the, almost to the knee. And I actually put an example in here of one that I really liked from. Um, let me see. His name is why am I blanking? <laughs> Leon Cerrone. I don't even know where he's from, but I've been following him. I think just because I liked his his style. Yeah. And this length of a wax coat is not something that I ever considered buying before this year. But now I'm like, oh, I kind of am into this. It's a little much, but like, I'm what essentially why what, what I wanted to say to you. If I went and bought a, a jacket that was much more this length as opposed to the length that I'm used to. Yeah. What do I need to be cognizant of when I'm dressing? Is there anything that I need to worry about? Like, I don't want to have my, like, I don't want to wear my skinniest pants with something like this because I don't want to look not proportional, but I also don't want to wear voluminous trousers with this mm-hmm. and then suddenly feel like I'm just a walking mass of like fabric giant, going down right, the street. Right, yeah. I think yeah. he has got a decent uh, handle on the proportions of what he's doing to where it works. I just don't know if I can make that work. I think the I think the slightly cropped pant is good here. If you go because if you go wider, if you go voluminous, and you're also doing like a pooling thing, then 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 yeah, you, I think you get into the to the weird proportion where you just have too much fabric happening. If you go to the, the next slide, he he transitions the scarf in the pocket over here to just being around the neck, and mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, yeah, that really works. The, the this is for for Austin, Texas. I have found that this length of coat is about as long as you're ever going to want to go. Yeah, if because if we d- because we drive, we get in cars and like a top coat is really generally like intended for for walking. Mm-hmm. Um and they even you you'll see a lot of this length of coat called a car coat. Mm-hmm. And that's because you can get in and out of your car without it okay. like Okay. Bunching around your legs and creating a whole like you'll you'll end up sitting on this coat a little bit, but it's not going to get in the way of you getting in and out of a car. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Um, but e- even at this length, sometimes it feels like a little like, you know, in this in a, in our cropped era here, I really like cropped coats because they feel so much more casual. And we generally in in Austin, Texas, not just because of the climate, but because of the of the way that we do things, which is taking Ubers and driving to the various destinations. And then we have very little walking once we're in, you know, maybe we'll walk down the street to a second location or something like that. But we're not we're not traipsing across the city, right? No, my so legs aren't like, tired like they were on Monday when yeah, we got back exactly. from New York. Like we we just have no need for like dusters and long top coats. And yeah. Like it just doesn't make sense. It feels too formal. Um, but the, so the, right, right about here, this length, which, uh, again, I, I would just search for car coats if I was looking for something like this. Okay. Um, but I just, one of the first things you said, I also don't, I'm not sure I've ever seen like a waxed looking barber style coat in this length. And I, it's pretty cool. It's different. I've, yeah, I've, it is I've, different. Um, yeah. It's not something I'm familiar with. I mean, like Sally I was struggling in New York because she had a longer coat and she was just like, when she was walking around, she's like, I just feel like I'm dressed very androgynous right now. Mm. She's like, and that's not what I'm going for. And she's like, do I look frumpy? Do I look whatever? And I'm like, I would have the same concern if I was wearing a coat that's longer than my normal length. Yeah. But then this came across my feed last night and I was like, Ooh, okay. This changes the way I look at things. But it's, it's interesting that on the times column here, they're, they're, they're talking about various lengths when on the men's side, we have had that conversation about how, like, it seems like coats are either very short or very long mm-hmm. right now. So sometimes that, that middle ground, like we just looked at on Leon Cerrone is, um, more difficult to even find. The menswear memes are going hard on wax jackets right now, now that the temperature's dipping in other places. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm still going to rock mine. Pro or, pro or anti? I think anti, skewing anti. Yeah, I never, uh, I never worry about wearing mine because it's kind of a classic piece anyway, and I don't think anyone should worry about it. Yeah, uh, I didn't touch mine last year. I like didn't wear it once, but I, I never consider getting rid of it because I know I'll like, I'll wear, I'll definitely wear it this year based on my excitement to wear it. I think it's because I went so long last year without wearing it. Yeah, uh, Barbara just did another col- or did a collab 
I don't even know how to say the name of this company. I believe, I believe that the pro, that the right way is Johnny. Johnny. I think this is Johnny. G A N N I. Very popular. They they actually do have uh, menswear, but super popular with um with women. There's a store on South Congress, even here in Austin, Texas. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, I like this. They've got. A, I don't know why I linked to the black one because I think the other one that they did that is green is much better. Uh, it's a little like it feels more patchworky and kind of cool. But I I linked the wrong one. Maybe because the green is sold out. Maybe I'm not seeing it. Maybe I saw it. I saw the green on Instagram, and when I searched for this, that's probably why I put it in there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Now's not a bad time to go out and get some some classic uh, English countryside clothing that might be a collaboration. I think like Marnie did a collaboration a couple of years ago with someone similar to Barber. It might have even just been Barber, and it was like great. Did uh so expensive though. Do you or Sally did did one of y'all grab the Noah Barber one of the Noah Barber jackets? No, I wanted to. Yeah. I wanted to and it sold out uh but it was at a time where I just I think I had just gotten my other wax jacket. Mine's Filson, but it, it looks just like a Barber. Mm -hmm. And shout out to that man Alfreder's discount. Ooh. I missed that. <laughs> I, when they told me I could, we could have a pro deal with Filson, I was like, "Oh yeah, I could. I'm I'm, I'm going to stock yeah, up yeah. on some some bags, a couple jackets, maybe some fleece." Uh, yeah, it's a good time to get in the game. Let me see. Okay, this last this last topic is kind of dumb. Uh, I mainly am just trying to tell you. I'm I'm trying to get you to tell me to either become a DJ or not become a DJ since I have uh, the Sunday Scaries following. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really I linked this because. Uh, it's called, they're huge on TikTok. Is that enough to make it as a DJ? A lot of people follow Tinks. A lot of people are familiar with Tinks. And mm -hmm, she's recently mm -hmm. pivoted to being a DJ. I had no idea about this until you shared this article with when me. When she originally I had pivoted no to being a DJ, a DJ I, yeah. I asked Sally, because Sally uh, took in a lot of her content for a long time. And, and I was like, is it a weird move to just become a DJ out of nowhere? And now it's becoming a thing where a lot of TikTokers and a lot of people with big followings are like, oh, I can do a DJ set. And it's probably sought after because these clubs know that if somebody with that big of a following is doing yeah. a DJ set, they're going to be able to f absolutely fill the club with people or at least get a decent crowd. Here's the thing. And I'm, I'm speaking to you as a former DJ myself. Mm -hmm. I was never a, I was never making my own beats. I was never putting together my own mixes. Mm -hmm. I was not doing that. I was getting behind professional equipment and crossfading and mixing, and I was curating what you were listening to. Okay. And this is a, and for anybody that likes music or thinks they have good music taste or likes putting on a party or thinks that they understand what a crowd wants at various times and, and, at, and at various places, this is something that is a lot of fun to do. It seems like it would. And in the social media age uh, we, 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 and, and with boiler room sets and when the DJ is like more is like the star of the show at this point, as this article alludes to, because that is why they are hiring these TikTok stars to come do this is because people will come to the club to see them. And you just get to sit there and put on music that you like and do this little number right here. Mm hmm. While, while people sur surround you and like, you know, gyrate and grind and it looks like a great experience and super fun. And there's maybe there's some of those smoke machines blowing the cold air down on people and people are looking like Troy Savon out there with their red undies and their white beaters. Like, why, <laughs> why would you not want to do this? Like, I'm not. I'm That's not, a good question. I'm not, a good question. I'm not mad at this because if, if, if my popularity a, a, as a brand and as a content creator ever leads to somebody being like, yo, you want to get behind the ones and twos and play some music? I'd be like, fuck yeah, I do. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. You, I can so, curate my own party right now. Yeah. What? 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 Who I feel bad for here <laughs> is that this is just this is absolutely ending the conversation about whether David Guetta or Rufus DeSole or whoever they're not doing anything up there. We've always known that, mm -hmm. but this, you have to think this rubs them the wrong way. Probably. Because this is just more proof that they're just playing songs up there. Yeah. And even if it is their own mix, they're not doing it live up there. They already did it so that they can stand there and have fun and pump up their arms and have everybody gyrate on them. Financially speaking, this is a good move for someone who has a big TikTok or Instagram yeah. following. Because I was at a uh, I'm not I can't I'm not gonna say too much. I was I was I was in Las Vegas. I was at a DJ set that was with a celebrity DJ. Okay. Not a, not a big celebrity DJ. I didn't know who the person was until I, it, someone said, oh, that's blah, blah, blah from blah, blah, blah. And I thought, oh, okay. And I was with somebody who does booking. And I asked, okay, well, how much, how much, how much is this set going to make this person? And they were like, 25 grand. And I was like, <laughs> oh. Yeah. 
So he just shows up for a couple hours, plays a few songs, makes 25 grand, parties in Vegas for the rest yeah. of the night, and then flies home. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal if you can get it. Yeah. I have a major issue here, though. There's already a DJ group called Sunday Scaries. Mm. So we can't roll that way. That's right. That's true. They're yeah, in good yeah. standing with me. Uh, after having a, a negative relationship with a, a certain CBD gummy company called Sunday Scaries, uh, I saw these guys were getting popular and I sent them a DM and I was like, we cool? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh yeah, we respect. And I was like, okay, let's have a mutual respect because I don't want to do this again. It's not fun. Uh, is there... A, and is they're there, getting popular too, so good for them. What about, is there a DJ, call, is there a DJ duo called Retail Therapy? See, that's the, there we go. There we go. Because See, maybe this I, is our know, end. I mentioned Rufus to Soul. That's like three of them up there. Exactly. Beating on the drums and playing, doing the light show and whatever else they're hitting play on. But I like Rufus to Soul, by the way. I, I don't mean to take shots at them. I, they're honestly, they're, I'm calling them out because they're top of mind because they're like the most recent electronic and artists. They're very I popular. To. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like just two of us up there. Just Let's do it. You know? The only well, thing better than one person doing this, you need both. Is two people up there doing this? I, I we Sally and I were in uh, <laughs> when Sally and I were in Lake Como, we uh, we were having dinner next to a younger couple, and we wanted to get a group pic and or not a group pic. We wanted to get a couple photo in front of the uh, sunset. Mm -hmm. We approached them, said what up, and like we immediately knew, oh, this person creates content for a living. Like the, she's she's not taking photos like someone who doesn't know how to take photos. Later found out that she's a DJ and that he's uh her husband was one of uh a DJ duo group. Okay. And uh chain she's smoker, like chain smokers? Not chain smokers, not chain smokers. <laughs> uh and so I, I followed them both on on Instagram and I I haven't been listening to a ton of them or anything, but I'm like, "Oh, okay, you guys are like legitimately making your own music in a very impressive way." Um I just don't know if I have it in me. People I are going to get sad at my sets when I'm just playing depressing music. That's true. That's true. Well, that's why this has to be a duo. You know, it's like a back and forth. Like mm -hmm. I'll pick them up. Mm -hmm. You, you know, you, you tone them down. I'm going to be like, dude, um, put di lay Dido over that. <laughs> Can we do some more cranberries? Uh, they, you know how like you know how like you'll see like pro golfers. It's like they make they make they make one cut and they make like seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars or whatever. But then you got to you got to think about that they got to pay their caddy. They had to get there. They had to stay there. They had to rent the car. They oh had yeah. To pay, pay, and it's like it's why being a professional golfer is really, really hard. That's the one thing that I hope that, that we got to look out for when we're signing our, our DJ contracts is like everything I, I need my fee, but also everything else to be paid for. Because if I go do a set at uh, towel in Las Vegas, that's, I know that's a very dated club restaurant. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what the cool ones are. Live anymore. beach, live beach, baby. Um, and I get my 25 K what what am I going home with? Like three after? I <laughs> yeah, right, right. I know the per the person I was referring to, which is I would classify him as a B or C list celebrity. <laughs> he flew private there, and I was like, "Well, that's like the entire budget. I don't yeah. know how much does it cost to fly private from uh, L.A. to Las like I'm, Vegas? Like I'm gonna stay penthouse at the Cosmo. I'm gonna hit the Chrome Heart store. It's such like... a short flight. Do you need to fly private from Vegas? Like, just get on a plane. <laughs> just get on a plane. We'll be the low maintenance DJs. Yeah, you yeah. can cut our thing in half, and we'll fly economy. We'll fly, yeah. Well, I don't know, comfort plus. Okay. They already know we're not going to have an expensive rider in the back because we <laughs> we famously do not ask for anything besides <laughs> breath mints and a steamer. <laughs> Embarrassing. <sighs> Wish list item time. Yeah, yeah. Um, lead us off. I'll step up to the plate. I've got a couple of um, kind of crazy winter. You might call them schboots. 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 Uh, I'll start. I'm pretty sure I added a pair of these last year, but I'm, I'm, I am so glad you added one of these. I'm adding these again because they're back with new colorways. And even though I think I might've liked the orange ones better last year, I still, I still really, I'm really, really into these. These are the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the weather hybrid Ugg Tasman. See, I need, I need the, the rubber dip on these because it stresses me out so much seeing people walk yeah. around with suede Uggs in yes, grimy weather. Yes. I mean, you you kind of had a version of this uh, on the, on the wish list a couple a month or so ago. Oh right? yeah, with the with Dude, the my with sisters the on stocks with the rubber molding around them. My sister's on an absolute grassroots campaign with these things. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's going to become the most popular boot or most popular shoe in Missoula, Montana, because she she texts me every time she wears them and says like, oh no, my friend just bought some when I wore them. My, my therapist just bought some when I went to an appointment, my blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. But I um, like these. Yeah. I, so I'm still really into these. This is the UGG all weather or weather hybrid Tasman. Uh, I kind of like, I'm not sure which color I would, if, if you just 
gave me an UGG gift card right now and said, buy a pair. I think I'm going blue. I you're going I'm, blue. I, I can I'm already tell loco. you're going blue. I think I'm going loco with the blue. Your next selection is a loco choice. Okay. My next selection is probably the item that I am closest to buying. At really? The out of anything. Out of anything on my wish list I right dropped now. this in a group text earlier this week. Th this pair of shoes? Yes. Really? Okay. This is, you know, we're Merrill boys around here. This is the Merrill Winter Mach 3 One Trail in the colorway Spice. Uh, shouts to Dune, Randy. Uh, bang the Dune gong. Um, the... <laughs> <laughs> this is like a this is kind of a version of uh, of Merrill's uh, Jungle Mock, which has kind of famously been derided, but also loved by, mm -hmm. you know, certain set of uh, of folks. This takes the one trail sole, which is like this, like kind of like chunkier trail white midsole and, and sole, which looks really cool and modern and makes it feel like a cool sneaker. And then the upper is basically like a cat, like a cow print calf hair uh, in a kind of orangey brown. And I, I, I absolutely like eighty percent chance I end up with a pair of these at Please some point over the season. Please do it. I, I got just, I got I really, roasted really these like for these. putting them in the group chat, which made me want made me be like, <laughs> no, now now I think they're cooler because it was my it was Sally and my sister in law. Um, I was really trying to stoke the fire to for my sister in law to get the Wales Bonner Adidas sure, in the yeah, Croc because yeah. I was like, she likes uh, nicer sneakers the burnt orange colorway i was like can you imagine how good this would look at a college football playoff game you have to get these <laughs> you have to get these and so she eventually got them and every photo i've seen of those uh, those shoes both colors mm -hmm. especially the blue i've only i've seen more of the blue on yeah. on foot for people they're badass yeah i can't pull them off they're a little cocky but yeah so she copped she copped she accidentally copped both pairs because she put in bids for both of them. She got the orange ones first, which she was excited about, and then forgot to cancel the other ones. Did and she have to go resale on these? Yeah, she didn't. She didn't get them in the confirmed raffle. that. Yeah, the... no. It's th man. I know the sneaker game has essentially it's all but died. It's really, really, really annoying that essentially the only person making any money on that sale from wherever resale site was the website. Yeah, like that's it. Yeah, like they're going like they they those retailed already for three hundred dollars, and right. she probably paid three seventy for them. Yep. And so the that the person selling them did not make any money. The no. only person that made money is StockX, and that's really fucking frustrating. Like, yeah, why wh why buy them to sell when you're not making any? Like that's just it's you know it's not that that is a grinder's game. Yeah. If it's like that's yeah yeah the resale prices aren't high enough to do. I need the resale prices to go down on these. Uh, on my, I'm wearing the Tom Sachs. Uh, yeah. Nikes well, they need today. to they need to drop them again. They need to just re-release another batch of them. Yeah, because I I love these down. shoes. I I actually spruced them up before I went to New York, which is probably a reckless move. I should have probably spruced them up after New York, but I had spilled some coffee on them, and it was just killing me forever. And uh, it, I was actually very surprised at how easy it was to clean them. Uh, the, the, look, the Merrill, the slip on Merrill is also nice for me because like, you know, I, in my day to day, I wear a lot of Howler brothers too. Uh -huh. I'm, already, I'm already outdoor at Jace. And so yeah. like this, this fits nicely into that world as well. Yeah. I wore my, uh, laceless Nordas that I got from our friends over at Huckberry. Um, uh, Sally likes to roast me for them, but I call them my Kendall Roy shoes and, <laughs> and I love just being able to slip them on. What you got for us, Will? I'm going more boring today. I'm going with a staple. I, I've, I've been on my denim grind lately. Uh, I'm wearing blue jeans right now, which is not something I do. And uh, someone recently asked me on an AMA uh, what my fall uniform's been. And I said that I was wearing the Abercrombie 90s cut jeans. Uh, I got a DM from the person who founded the company um, every other Thursday, Ethan Glenn. And he said, if you like those, you're going to absolutely love these. And so I am planning on getting a pair of these. Uh, which is just their classic four pocket denim. It's their first foray into denim, one hundred fifty nine dollars uh, for good jeans. That seems like a decent price. And uh, honestly, I've told I've told people in the past. I was wearing uh, I was wearing one of the sweaters from them uh, at the meetup, and I had a lot mm -hmm. of people asking me. And I cannot ride for the sweater more than I have. I wore it the entire time I was in New York because I didn't really pack that much. Uh, the sweater was the perfect. It's it's such a good cut that I will ride for it. But everything I've bought from them, a uh, couple sweaters, a uh, t-shirt, everything has has come in and I've been continually impressed with it. So I'm going to ride this train until it's done. I, I think I'm going to end up getting the red sweater if it's still in stock for Christmas this year because it's just, I love the sweater. Was is, So is this what you've been wearing is the cashmere knit? Yep. I was wearing the gray. Okay. Uh, the, the sleeves are... 
they feel much more 90s than what you're used to. Like they don't clean to your arms. They're a little baggier, as you mm -hmm. can see in this photo, a little longer. Flipping up the cuff on them was uh, made it made it just kind of feel softer and kind of more like I don't. It's just a great sweater. Yeah. I I mean I I rarely took it off. The only time I took it off was because I packed my uh, rowing blazers Grateful Dead sweater when the night that Phil Lesh died. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna rock some Grateful Dead out on the town tonight and get some some shout outs. So. These jeans are notable because while the classic traditional uh, pair of jeans is a uh, five pocket, these are only four. I don't need more than four. He said, he said, I'm losing the fifth pocket. I don't need I don't, that five. I don't, I don't need it. We're nope. not, we don't put the coins in there anymore. Yeah, where are you supposed to put your pocket watch? Uh, well, it's true. You know, that you, it's true. you're going to have to leave it at home when you put on the four pocket denim from every other Thursday. Yep. 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 I think that's all she wrote. Shall we call it? Call it.